Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Simon and in this one, well, on the main channel, Mega Projects, videos about big guns do really well, so I thought in this one we'd explore all the big guns that aren't quite big enough for a dedicated Mega Projects video. If you've stumbled across this video and you're wondering what Mega Projects is, well, it's the channel that spawns this channel. It might be linked to below if I remember to put the link there and let's jump in. War has been a notable part of human civilization, running as far back as history books can tell. Catapults and crossbows were indeed the first game changers in the history of warfare because they were the pioneers of long range combat. <laughs> Really good when we decided we could kill people from far away rather than, you know, having to get super close. No one likes that. However, the discovery of gunpowder in 9th century China paved the way for the invention of some of the world's most deleterious weapons that mankind has ever seen. The first gun appeared in China in the late 10th century, and it was aptly named a fire lance. This gun was made from a bamboo tube filled with gunpowder, and it did sort of look like a low-budget DIY firecracker. Don't try it at home, kids. However, it was a terrifying piece, inflicting injuries and having enemies scampering for safety. Over the years, better Bigger and, well, nastier guns were developed. Thus, guns went from weighing a few kilograms to hitting over a hundred thousand kilograms. Today, we'll be taking a gander at some of the biggest guns that history has ever known. Some of these ridiculously oversized guns have rather anticlimactic endings, leaving us to wonder what would have been if things had gone just a little differently. Karl Gerat was a German-made self-propelled siege mortar which featured in the Second World War between 1941 and 1945. It weighed a stunning 126 tons, and with a caliber of 600 millimeters, that's 23 inches, it could fire shells that weighed over 2,100 kilograms, which is 4,700 pounds. That's heavier than two regular small trucks. Karl Gerat was chiefly designed to help the Nazis break through the impenetrable Maginot Line in France. Although it was capable of self-propulsion, Kargarat was a rather slow machine with a top speed of only 10 kilometers an hour. As a result, the Nazis ended up disassembling it, transporting it by rail, and reassembling it on the front lines. This was pretty ironic because the original idea of the Nazi engineers was to build something that didn't need to be assembled on the front lines. But they ended up building this self-propelled machine, but because the preparation time was so lengthy, they ended up just assembling it on the front lines anyway. Only seven of these giants were built during the war, six of which saw combat between 1941 and 1945. The first combat experience of the Kargarat came in 1941 during the opening phases of Operation Barbarossa. However, this was riddled with a lot of technical setbacks from assembly problems to electrical issues. This doesn't really come as a surprise because the Nazi engineers had struggled over Kargarat's design and had ended up building a self-propelled tank that wasn't self-propelled. Even though it was German, it just wasn't that well made. In the following years, Kargarat tanks took part in the Battle of Sevastopol, the Warsaw Uprising, the Battle of the Bulge, and the Battle of Remagen. In this last battle, it made a bid to destroy the Ludendorff Bridge, however, it had negligible effects on it. However, this bridge ended up falling on the 17th of March 1945 after suffering hits from all other kinds of German weapons, including the more successful V-2 rockets. By the end of the war in 1945, most of the Kargarat tanks were captured and scrapped by Allied forces. However, there is a Kargarat currently on display at the Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. The Abusier de 520 model 1916 was a railway howitzer produced by the French during the First World War. It was, as hinted by its rather long name, a 520 mm that's 20 inch caliber gun, and had a total mass of 263 tons. The howitzer fired shells weighing over 1,600 kilograms, over 3,500 pounds, across a maximum range of 17 kilometers, 10.6 miles. The Abusier de 520 model 1916 was ordered in well, 1916, two years into World War I. However, there were delays in the procurement process and the first gun did not hit the tracks until late 1917, just when the war was nearing its end. You might think that this gun would be on the front lines just in time to dish out 
not a blast in the closing phases of the war, but the Abusier did not even get a cameo appearance thanks to a terrible error by the operators. During its firing trials in July 1918, a shell detonated prematurely in the howitzer's barrel, rendering it completely useless. A second one was completed and delivered shortly afterward, but before it could complete its firing trials, well, the Great War ended. Its story, however, was not yet over. The French placed the gun in storage until the beginning of the Second World War. Unfortunately, they never got to use it then either because they were subdued in 1940 by Nazi forces who took control of all of France, as well as their giant guns. Having a fondness for giant artillery though, the Nazis refurbished the gun and brought it to the war front during the Siege of Leningrad in 1941. A cursed breed, the second Bouzier de 520 model 1916 got destroyed in January 1942 when, just like its predecessor, a shell detonated prematurely in its barrel. The Paris gun was a class of long-range siege artillery made by the Germans. Several of these were in service from March to August 1918 and were used to bombard Paris during the First World War. The barrel length of the Paris gun was unprecedented, measuring 34 meters, that's 111 feet. This made it the largest artillery gun of World War I. The shells from the Paris gun weighed 106 kilograms, 234 pounds. They were fired at impressive speeds and could cover significantly more height than any other weapon produced at the time. The Paris guns were able to bombard Paris from a distance of 120 kilometers away, that's 75 miles. According to writer Adam Hochschild, the shells fired from the guns covered the distance to the city in three minutes, hitting an altitude of 40 kilometers, 25 miles, at the very peak of their trajectory. This was the highest point any human-made object had ever reached at that time by some way. And by the way, that's nearly four times the maximum altitude of modern commercial airliners. This groundbreaking height, pun intended, was only superseded during the Second World War by the German V2 rockets. With such power, the Paris gun earned the honor of launching the first human-made object to ever enter the stratosphere. The height of these projectiles was so enormous that the Coriolis effect, the rotation of the Earth, was taken into account while calculating where the shells would land. When the Germans began their first bombardment of Paris, the Parisians thought they were being attacked by high-altitude zeppelins. This is because they couldn't hear the sound of airplanes or cannons, and chaos was just raining from the skies. Indeed, the main objective of the Germans was to attack the morale of the Parisians and not really destroy them. Thus, the Paris gun did an absolutely fantastic job as a psychological weapon. By the end of its service, the Paris gun had fired at least 320 shells at a max rate of 20 shells per day. It caused significant damage to properties in Paris and caused about 870 casualties, 250 dead and 620 wounded. Its largest casualty count came on March the 29th, 1918, where it hit a church, killing 91 people and injuring 16. Nobody knows the whereabouts of these guns after the war. It is believed that the Germans had destroyed them along with their construction plans as the war drew to an end. The 39-ton SAR cannon holds the Guinness World Record for the largest bombardment cannon in the world based on caliber size. Crafted in 1586, and I didn't read that wrong, in Moscow, Russia during the reign of Tsar Fyodor Ivanovich, the SAR cannon was made of bronze. With its barrel measuring a massive 890 millimeters, 35 inches, the SAR cannon sits among the top three biggest guns in history by caliber size. But for all its massiveness, it was never fired in anger. This is perhaps because it was mostly built as a symbol of Russian power, and it wasn't really for warfare. A few studies have, however, discovered gunpowder residue in its barrel, indicating that it has been fired at least once. The gun was sometimes called the Russian shotgun, owing to the fact that it was meant to shoot around 800 kilograms of stone grape shots rather than actual cannonballs. The Tsar cannon is currently located in Ivanovskaya Square, the largest square in the Kremlin in Moscow. It is also located close to the Tsar Bell, which is the largest bell in the world. And fun fact here, it's never been wrong. Little David is an American 914mm 36-inch caliber mortar used during the Second World War. Its name is quite ironic as no gun in history has ever surpassed its caliber size. Developed in May 1857, this supersized heavy mortar is only challenged by the British Mallets mortar, which has the same caliber size. Weighing over 78,000 kilograms, that's 173,000 pounds, the monstrous mortar can fire 3,650-pound shells across 9.7 kilometers, that's 
6 miles with a muzzle velocity of 381 meters a second. Little David easily surpassed Germany's monster Schwerer Gustav, which had a caliber size of 800 millimeters. If you'd like to know more about Schwerer Gustav, by the way, did a whole video on that on Mega Projects, so you can check it out. Also, it was ready to be fired in 12 hours as opposed to the more lethal Schwerer Gustav. The Schwerer Gustav could fire heavier shells over longer distances with more accuracy, but it took about three weeks to get it into firing position. Indeed, Little David was originally used for test firing aerial bombs at a U.S. Army facility in Aberdeen. However, by 1944, the American forces had laid out plans to invade the Japanese mainland and were expecting extremely tough fortifications. As such, the army required a heavy-duty weapon to combat them. This weapon would have been larger than the 410mm 16.14-inch guns found on the Iowa-class battleships whose 2,700-pound shells proved ineffective against Japanese bunkers at Iwo Jima. Ultimately, the army decided to turn Little David into a ginormous siege mortar. However, before Little David could get the chance to prove its worth with its first real shot, the Japanese surrendered, bringing war hostilities to an end. So, I hope you had a blast running through this little list of history's biggest guns. There are several other guns that deserve to be mentioned, but we can't cover them all at once here. One such gun is the one I mentioned, the Schwerer Gustav. If you'd like to learn more about that, please do check it out on the Mega Projects channel. Also, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button below. Do subscribe. We've got brand new videos every week. Uh, so, subscribe, hit that like button. Oh, if you've got a suggestion for future videos, leave it in the comments below. And thank you for watching.